Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of The Evolution Show. So grab a cup of tea, sit back, relax, and let's catch up. So I'm joined today by a very special guest. This is my sister, Lale. Hello. Um, she is visiting from Canada. She goes to college up in Montreal. Yeah. And we are so lucky that she has decided to join us today um, to talk to us a little bit. Um, and we're going to do a product review episode this week. Um, we're going to talk about a couple of new things that I have not seen and she has not seen. And um, she's an amazing artist with an amazing eye. Thank you. So Thank you. I really, uh, I do appreciate her input and I know that she knows um, when something is good and when something is not so good. Mm -hmm. And Keep also, <laughs> and also she has been helping us out with our social media and marketing efforts for the past several weeks now. I was finally able to rope her into the family business and it's part of her plan yeah stick my claws into her and um so if you've noticed a significant improvement in our social media <laughs> posts in the past several weeks she's the reason why um so it's even better that she's here because she's talking to you guys directly when you um post a comment when you ask a question She's most likely the one who's getting back to you, so you really have your finger on the pulse of what the people want. And school is online now, so <laughs> feel free to comment and ask questions. I have a lot of time. Yeah, on my any time to do that. Yeah, yeah. whatever right. you guys want. <laughs> um, so anyway, so as far as what's been going on this week, um, we have been enjoying visiting with each other, obviously, and also as far as what the store has been doing. Um, we just got a huge taxidermy shipment in this week, which was very exciting. Um, and we have been displaying that, and you've been taking some pictures of that and posting that online. Um, how has the response been so far? Do, are people into it, or people? is it too much? Is it, well, you know? Well, you would think that maybe some people think it's a little bit too much, mm -hmm. but uh, so far what I've seen, people have just been super excited to have these sort of products in their homes. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing that we'll do at the store with some of our more like permanent um, products, mm -hmm. uh, we like to name them in the store, right? <laughs> so like Rocky the Raccoon, if you're yeah, a local, if we, you know Rocky the Raccoon. If we feel like someone's going to stick around for a while, yeah, they get a name. <laughs> right. So there's this big bear that you guys just installed. Mm -hmm. So I asked people on Instagram what they thought we should name it. Oh, that's so cute. Uh, a lot of people said Baloo uh -huh. from The Jungle Book, which mm -hmm. makes sense. Because mm -hmm. um, also he's a relaxing bear. He's very relaxed. Yeah, he's yeah, not, yeah. like that was the that was the name of him when we bought him, a relaxing bear oh, on branch. <laughs> <laughs> he's not like standing up, he's not aggressive or anything. He's just kind of like lazily, mm -hmm. kind of resting. So yeah. that does seem very appropriate. Um, Someone just wanted to name them Steve or Jim. <laughs> Which I guess if you're at the office, the like chill yeah. guy at the office is Steve or Jim, yeah. I guess. Uh -huh. uh, but my favorite was uh, someone suggested Darwin. I mm. thought that was a good one. That was that's really cute. cute. That was yeah. Cute. yeah okay. Really so yeah, keep the comments coming. That's that's cute. Let us know. Um, yeah. So as far as uh, the taxidermy is concerned, we did. We were so some of the pieces that we have in the store. Um, if you take a look, are very very large. Yeah. Obviously difficult to move. They're full body mounts of lots of different types of animals. Um, but one that was a little bit more portable that I was able to bring today to talk to you guys about is our skunk. So here he is. I'm saying he, but I don't actually know. There's probably a way to find out. Probably. More like that. <laughs> so this is the skunk. Can I get that to focus properly? No? So this is him. I think he he is absolutely adorable. He's really small. He is really cute, yeah. I've seen them bigger, but this I think you know good things come in small packages sometimes, and he's very well, um, very well prepared. Actually, you can see um, like you know the ears have been especially well preserved. Um, they're not broken or chipped. That happens a lot with taxidermy preparation sometimes because it's such a thin mm -hmm. piece of membrane. Like you can touch it, you can see it's like so much thinner yeah, it is. than the rest of the tissue. His so nails they are all done as well. Yeah, he's, he got his nails done. <laughs> he's looking fabulous. There we go. It's like we're gonna get our nails done. Yes. <laughs> gonna get our nails done next week. Um, yeah, so he's, he's looking very fierce. Long, long nails. And um, I also liked him in particular because 
the fur is very, very luxurious. Yeah, it is very soft. That's so true. soft. So soft. No like bald patches or anything like that. Very And his whiskers are intact as well. Oh yeah, look at those whiskers. Very cute. And um yeah, it's just a really nicely done uh piece of taxidermy. The face, especially for these sort of pieces of taxidermy, are always kind of harder to get yeah. done well. And this is like you can see every part of his face well. It's, it's well done. Yeah, absolutely. The, the the expression is so hard to capture, like a natural type of expression in taxidermy a lot of the times. Um, they'll make, I've seen some very strange pieces where, you know, I, I call it trashidermy. It's like really <laughs> bad. Um, where like the eyes are like too big or like the mouth is in a weird position. Like someone's, it's, I think taxidermy is really wonderful because it's such a, it's such a great example of the relationship between art and science. Mm -hmm. Like in order to do good taxidermy, not only do you have to have really deep scientific knowledge of anatomy How and stuff like that. Yeah, and, and like that. the techniques of, of, you know, the technical skills involved of really, you know, doing a good job, but then- How muscles move as exactly, well. Exactly, yeah. yeah. How to pose them in a naturalistic way, mm -hmm. do, doing something that they would normally be doing. So you need to know about like their mouths and like, the, yeah, the, the behaviors. Like, behavior. and, yeah, all of that. And then um, you also have to have an artist's touch mm -hmm. in terms of putting together an expression that looks good, um, you know, different, uh, you know, sometimes just like having the, like proper technique to do it. Like yeah. Sort of executing things. In exactly. Aesthetically point, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I just think he's really well done. And I think it's so interesting. You don't usually get, you know, I mean, we're all familiar with skunks, right? Um, and, but you don't often get to see them up close. Obviously, if you see a skunk That's in true. the wild, yeah, usually you're, gonna, like, you're heading the away, other way. Yeah. So it's nice to have an opportunity to actually look at them. They have like this cute little stripe here. And he's not as threatening as I thought he was going to be. I guess when you see a skunk in real life, they're usually like hissing at you or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. Um, but he actually kind of looks a little cute. My dad just adopted cats today, and he looks a little bit like a six-year-old kid, like six-month-old kid. Oh, yeah, that's cute. And um, you can see also what you don't usually see is like the there's the white fur here on the inside that then goes to black, which I think is interesting. I didn't know that that happened. Um, yeah, so that's really cool. So um, skunks are um, Mephitis. Mephitis is their scientific name. And I just looked that up. And apparently that comes from some Greek or Roman goddess uh, that was named for, it was, she was the personification of poisonous gases emitted from swamps or volcanoes. So very appropriate. Yes. Yeah. So that was why skunks are named the way that they well, are. Well, some people have skunks in their house, but they make sure to get rid of the glands first. Yeah. And then yeah. you can have them just as, as pets. pets and Yeah, know. I think they're probably pretty intelligent, you know, little crafty creatures. Mm -hmm. And they're certainly fuzzy and lovable. Mm -hmm. And um, we should note also that this one doesn't stink at all. <laughs> like, <laughs> not even a little bit. Yeah. It's completely, completely odor-free. Um, that is a, a concern that I imagine some people might have. And, um, yeah. Good shot of him. He's the best. Uh, so he's we... really friendly. You can see in his face. Yeah. He's just looking for a new home. Just happy to be here. Yeah. How many cartoon skunks can you guys think of? Ooh. Didn't you name your cat after your, you one of your first cats after, what is it, Pepe Le Pew? Yeah, Pepe Le Pew. We had one uh, cat named Pepe Le Pew. Another, can you say why? Because Oh, because he had a tail just like this. He had a big fuzzy tail. Um, big black cat. He didn't have any white on him, but he was a big black cat with a big fuzzy tail. Yeah, he's like yeah, a Maine Coon, Coon something or other. And he had, um, he was so fuzzy. He looked really just just like this, really. Mm -hmm. um, so he was cute. So we have Pepe Le Pew. Who else? I um, can't think of anybody else. I think it was just Flower Ooh. from Bambi. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no? Is that too long? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Mom just showed me like French like cartoons. <laughs> yeah, like, I, don't really know. There was a cartoon all about skunks a while back. Really? Yeah, all of the animals were skunks. Is this um, Dexter's time name. or is this? Mm -hmm. No, it was like a long time ago in the 90s, maybe, or early 2000s. You know Never. what uh, flowers, uh, like, make was in the... In Bambi? Flower yeah. what? What well, flowers made? He, he ends up with a little girl skunk at the end. Um, Miss Skunk. 
Miss Skunk. <laughs> That's classic. Just don't bother to give her a full identity. <laughs> so messed up. That's very messed up. Mm. Um, but if you take this skunk home, you can name him or her whatever you want. He'll be part of your family. Um, yeah, so, so this is just one of the many pieces of taxidermy that we added to the store this week. We hope to be adding a lot of them online as well. Um, this one we're going to be posting online. Um, and we're going to do free shipping if you would like to bring him home um, for the next week. So definitely check that out. And otherwise, uh, please come on down to the store and check out the larger pieces of taxidermy that we just put out. We have some really amazing pieces. We have the bear, as we said. Which is huge. Which is huge. Uh, we have this amazing coyote. We have a... Ori, isn't that cool? My friend Ori wants it because it's it looks so like her dog. It's the, yeah, yeah, it's really cute. It's, it's really one of the best pieces yeah. I've ever seen. It's in a, it's posed in like an aggressive pose. Mm -hmm. Like it's like snarling. Yeah. It's so cool. Very, again, that's the really like realistic, you know, really precise um, taxidermy work. We have um, a juvenile bobcat. We have a beaver. Is we the have... deer new or was that from before? No, we have the deer from before. That one's not new. It's Bambi and Flower now yeah. together again. Yeah. Oh. And I put a little bunny. Were they next friends to them. in the story? They were friends in the story, right? In what? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. Good, good. And I put a little. We don't want to bring in bunny together. next to it too. Oh, for that's thumper. Cute. That's cute. Yeah, so they're all together. We're all on theme. <laughs> <laughs> Call this the Bambi episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have a raccoon and a possum. Mm -hmm. Never had a possum before. And then I don't know if we will have it installed by the time this airs, but if we don't, it will be very soon. We're going to have a full length, 10 foot long alligator um, oh, wow. in the store. So we Maybe haven't had a chance. Uh, we'll find a place. We're not sure yet. <laughs> like on the ceiling, Maybe. upside down. Maybe upside down on the ceiling. That would be cool. Um, but anyway, so uh, that's it for taxidermy for right now. Let's move on to the... Let Maybe us know in the comments what we should name. Yes. Skunk. Yes. If you have any suggestions, that would be great. Well, it's not going to happen to me. Me neither. Me neither. Um, so we're going to talk about today some new products. Oh. I have not seen these. Lale has not seen these. So this is completely new. Um, we are featuring today uh, uh, items from Authentic Models which is one of our vendor partners that we've been using for many, many years. Uh, they make exactly what their name sort of says. They make really authentic looking reproductions of vintage scientific instruments. Oh, cool. So, like the pocketbook and the, not the pocketbook, the, the pocket, uh, pocket watch, watch yeah. and the compass. Okay. And we have like a telescope and, mm -hmm. um, you know, or like a spyglass rather. So yeah, they, they make really high quality reproductions of vintage. Yeah things you know so it makes a really it's it's a it's a really beautiful way of adding to your home decor having something that's kind of historically significant mm -hmm. um and it's not just a tchotchke, tchotchke everything they make is also functional oh that's cool which is well, cool not, so not everything not everything not everything they're mostly props oh i thought um, like well like all the compasses work and the stuff compasses like that. work yeah but not everything oh okay yeah. Well, I thought most of things did. Yeah, you probably because you haven't tried. <laughs> <laughs> Mike has I, tried. I, I went then. through all of them. <laughs> I used all of them, uh -huh. and most of them work, like okay. the the sundial, uh -huh. the compasses. Uh, but like the compasses work, but they're not. You know, if you drop them and stuff, they could break. They're not like. Well. Yeah, not, course, not a true anything, travel compass. Well, right. no, yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's it's functional. It's yeah, yeah. not necessarily something. That yeah. They're, not necessarily rugged pieces. They're meant to be mm -hmm. put on a shelf, yeah. but they work a little bit. Yeah, they do. Anyway, so this is uh, one new item that we have not seen. And Mike, buy this because this is kind of your area. Yeah. Your like that's... favorite part. Yeah, this is kind of his, his favorite. Okay, so um, everything is also very nicely packaged, which is also very nice. Always uh, comes in a little oh, navy cute. blue pouch. What could it be? Ooh. I can't even begin to guess what this is for. What is this? Figure out angels. It's a contraption. Can you fig can you guess what it is, Lana? It's like when you ask kids what a, what a telephone. <laughs> yeah, is. Well, how do you use an old phone? 
not that young. <laughs> um, it's to figure out angles, I guess, when you're... Oh, that's good, that's good. Right? Yeah. Angles are involved, I'm angles sure. Are angles involved. are involved. I guess you would... I feel like you're just supposed to put... Maybe... Okay, let's think about this. <laughs> <laughs> it goes like this. There's like a little stand here. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Okay, so this probably goes like on your work, like on your whatever you're designing for an architect. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Okay. Oh, and you think it's used in architecture? Like maybe. To oh, figure okay. Out. okay. Architecture. Am I close? To or figure it... out angles. Uh huh. Is this close? I don't want to go. Okay, I well, I think I know what it is. I'm not 100 percent sure. I think it's a sextant. Yeah. I'm more lost than I was. <laughs> You're lost because a sextant actually helps you find your way. Oh, it's, that was cute. it's a navigation that was good. instrument. It's a good transition. So I think that it does figure out angles, but I guess it's the angle of like the stars or something. Oh, okay. Or the sun well, to help you navigate. You you're holding it the wrong way. Oh, no. <laughs> Is it supposed to be like this? No, sideways. Like like this? Like that. There you like go. Like this? And oh. You go through there. Oh. Oh, yeah. I see. So and, it's like a little tiny telescope. But what and do you, see uh, you can figure out the, the angle of an object that you're looking in the sky. So you align uh, the sextant with the horizon uh -huh. and then another piece of the sextant with... Uh, uh, you notice in the mirror that there's like uh, two split parts. You see that? Yeah. yeah. So on the left side you see the horizon. On the right side you're supposed to see the item that you're looking for. Uh, and you align the two and you get the angle in the bottom. But that sextant is not very well calibrated. So it but what well. is the purpose of knowing the angle of Oh, because if you know are. the angle of a star or the sun, you know where in the globe you are. Oh, do you? Yeah. <laughs> Off the top of your head, you know that? <laughs> well, you can figure well, it you out. Have charts and you have charts. Like, they have like. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Here. So, but like when I'm looking through this, this is good for me because I get lost all the time. <laughs> so I don't think you should be using a sextant to navigate. Like I, we're, we live in New York, which is you know a pretty easy. Yeah, it's a grid system. Yeah, it's an easy city to navigate. I still can't do it. Um, I used like a comp like the compass on your iPhone. <laughs> I use because Google Maps sometimes like messes with you, especially if you're in midtown. So this might be better. Like so next time line. you're walking around with your friends, you're lost. You pull out. <laughs> Pocket sextant. <laughs> but I still don't see anything here, though. Yeah, that, that one is not very well calibrated. Oh, it's I mostly see. a uh, prop. Oh, joke, I yeah. I see. Yeah, this this looks really complicated. <laughs> it looks, but you know, so, it's accurate in terms of the. But when um, you put it down, when you're not using it, you would put it like this, right? Well, sure, but the, that little handle that you guys think it's a it's a handle. It's this not is, a yeah. You hold it like this. Yeah, yeah. Like That's a little handle, handle. and. Uh, these uh the shades are supposed to i can see through it stuff. yeah i can see you oh, you, oh can you see me yeah, i can see you yeah i moved these out and uh, you see those little shades <laughs> yeah. those uh the little shades here they are to protect your eye right like oh. in case because the sun will shine here oh. and then you can put the little shades down to protect your eye okay. these are like little tiny like dark Darkened glass, mm -hmm. just like sunglasses. Yeah, and oh. uh, often uh, pirates, they would, you know, or other sailors would <laughs> use sextant incorrectly and burn their eyes out, and that's why they wear eye patch. What? That's not true. What? Yeah. Is that actually yeah. true? So often. it's like it's not like white hazard. or. Yeah, workplace hazard. Yeah, and then, so you're yeah. telling me that people who are in battle practically all the time is how they make their living is like fight other ships, lose their eye because of this thing? Well, often, not always. I'm sure that some of them must have gotten, you know, poked as well. But, but I often. imagine if you're using this every day, yeah, yeah I guess. it's more likely that this is going to be the cause of injury. Okay. And how um, precise, like, of a location can this actually be? It's get very you? precise. I think. Uh, one sixtieth of a degree, uh, or one fifteenth of a degree, something like that. Less than a degree of precision. It's very, very precise. So, so people could still use this today if they wanted it. Yes. It be, yeah. Yeah. You it could still be like use more it direct than like follow the North Star or something like that. Yeah. Well, that's the kind of the idea because 
you know, if you follow the North Star, depending where you are in the globe, you might not want to follow it. Mm-hmm. You want to keep it at a certain position yeah. from you so that you know where you are. But mm-hmm. that's what that does. Hmm. Cool. Do you know well, why it's called a sextant? Yeah, because it's uh, it divides. It's a sixty degree, so we can measure up to sixty degree inclination from. Uh, oh, uh, I see. Like from, from the thing you're looking from mm-hmm. the horizon. So the, right? yeah, so, so this has sextant is I degrees, think the Latin word for sixty. It goes from zero to one twenty, so I guess like sixty is in the middle. Uh, well, it it goes from zero to one twenty. But the way that the thing is calibrated, it's actually 60 degrees. Like, uh, oh. it's, I, I can't, I don't remember how to explain, but uh, because of the angles in the mirror, you lose some precision. Huh? Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, so the question is, yay yeah or nay for the store? It reminds me a little bit of, do you ever see that movie Hugo? With mm-hmm. like, oh, Kate yeah. the Clock Tower? It reminds that. me a little bit of yeah. that. So it does have like that sort of like, Kind of like antique steam chunky, charm. Yeah. yeah. And you guys are going for a more industrialized look mm-hmm. for the store too, so that goes well with it. Um, I don't know how popular these things are in general, like how many people know what a sextant is, is, yeah. is. And if you can get most of the people in the store who work for you to be able to explain it properly. Yeah, we're gonna need like a real sign. Yeah. <laughs> like a little tutorial. Yeah. It's like watch the video. Huh. Press play, explain me. Yeah, I, I'd be curious, maybe that because um, I feel like we have a larger version we of this already. We have a larger already. version. Yeah, uh, yeah. I haven't checked if the large version works. I should check it out. But so we have a larger sextant in the store, oh. which is kind of why I more or less knew what it was. Oh, okay. Because I recognize it. Um, but do we need a pocket sextant as well as a well larger sextant? What's the more how to say? Uh, closer to real, like were people using a larger sextant or is this uh, more the size? More of the like a larger sextant, I think. Yeah. I think that's the more common. This is just a small scale, scale reproduction. Yeah. So what made you want to buy a smaller version? I don't know, just to try it out because I, I like gadgets <laughs> and small gadgets are also cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, sure. I just, I imagine if people are into this sort of stuff, mm-hmm. they would want the one that's they would want probably the most one. realistic to what they were used for in real life or the size that they had in real life. It's my guess. I don't know. Okay. Well, why don't you guys let us know? Should we, do we need a, a, a pocket, a mini sextant? Mm-hmm. Okay. Or do we, are we cool with just a larger sextant? I don't know. I think it's cool um, because I like it because it's, you know, historically based in something, yeah. mm-hmm. which is cool. I like the just the aesthetics of it, the brass, the the gears and it stuff does like that. It's, cool. it's a yeah. cool piece to have in your home. Mm-hmm. However, it is small. So if you were gonna put something on a shelf, it you know, would probably you would want probably a want a larger yeah. one. So I wonder what the appeal would be of a smaller one. So maybe it could be if you have sort of like a, a kid in your life who is starting to get interested in these sort of mm-hmm. things and you don't want to give them such a big piece because mm-hmm. maybe they're younger or something like that or if they're small hands. Yeah. Cool. That could be well, right. so that's a uh, pro- product number one. Do we have one, or, uh, two or three products? Uh, two. 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 Okay, so this is the second one. Again, no idea what's in here. It's brand new to both of us. Okay, but well, it's a little up. heavy. It has a nice weight to it. All of their stuff is really well constructed, right? Like that piece that we were just holding had a nice weight to it. So, it. yeah, it didn't feel flimsy at all. No, it's not flimsy. Let me open up. Okay. <laughs> what do we got? You got like out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is. Can I open the plastic that I find? Yeah, yeah. Look at it. Open. Oh, it is. So, mm-hmm. the first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? When I was younger, Mom used to bring me to the Museum of Medieval Torture Devices. <laughs> and this looks like something called la poire, the pear. It looks like a pear. And it would, like, you would insert this in someone and, like, expand it. And it oh, would, like, no. Yeah. That's so This hard. is the first thing that comes to <laughs> I don't know what it's Great. for. 
I wonder if you're the only person that has that association <laughs> in the entire world. Okay. I might. So I'm guessing that this happens. Okay, so it's a stand. <laughs> <laughs> Your dark mind. <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, it's a two part. It's a two part. It's okay, so this is a stand. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this is binoculars. So, it also, this is functional. It is functional. This one, oh, this one works well. perfect. I can see really good. <laughs> glasses. <laughs> glasses you get. You oh, I see the little, little, little like, label they left in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, these work perfectly fine. Yeah, that's yeah, great. great. They're pretty. Yeah. Now, it says, do, warning, do not view the sun directly. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want an eye patch. You don't want, yeah, exactly. eye you don't want an eye patch. You don't want to be a pirate. Yeah. A double pirate. Um, and then, so let's see, how does this connect? I love this. I think I'm a fan of this one. Um, this makes me think of uh, bird watchers. Mm -hmm. So if you have like a little spot in your home, yeah, where you have, like your little bird watching thing, like set a little up, window. Usually those kind of like plasticky sort of rubbery binoculars kind of throw off the aesthetic because bird watching books are usually really nice quality books. Yeah, like they're actually art they're art, yeah, they're yeah. art books in a way. And usually people have like nice drawings of birds and stuff out. Uh, and it's usually a nice cute place of your home to mm -hmm. like enjoy it. And then if you have this to go with the aesthetic and it's not ruined by this like sort of rubbery binoculars that you have. Yeah. This I like that is great. Works. That's a, that would be a great use for that. I love that. And I think this is really nice because um it kind of looks like Wally. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I think this is great because I think that this really elevates like like the the pocket sextant is cool, but it's just what it is. You know what I mean? This I think it's like not just binoculars. Now it becomes a piece of art that you could put on yeah. a shelf. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I think the stand, if it were just the binoculars, I wouldn't be as enthusiastic about it. But I think the fact that it comes with the stand makes it so much nicer um to display mm -hmm. and of course it has the functionality so you can use it you know to actually like look at things but um i think this is great i would definitely have this in my house like yeah. i think this would go seamlessly mm -hmm. i really love the patina um you can see the, oh, is that the patina the, yeah. the, the way it's like worn a little bit oh right like the wornness of it um, it's not like a shiny brass. It's not totally mm -hmm. black. It has a little bit of texture and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not totally uniform, which I like makes it look vintage. And, yeah. and this is, this is, you know, one of the really cool, like vintage reproductions that I think they make. So I am totally down for this. I think this is great. Um, and then you can wrap it up when you don't want when it you're anymore. Done watching your <laughs> opera. When you can you're put it away <laughs> and uh, yeah, put it away for storage. But honestly, I would just leave this. Um, yeah, all the time. this seems like a great gift idea. Yeah, for me. yeah, yeah, for sure. And I can never figure out what to give my dad to and I would I would give him this. Yeah, totally cool. I think it's very nice. I think this is definitely a winner. So and anyway. Mike. Yeah. Awesome. Thank so, you. Those are the two products. Let me see. Can I get it back the other one? Yeah. All right. We have our two um, two new products, and uh, so we will decide whether we want to add these uh, to the store selection or to the website for your uh, enjoyment. And then we have our new friend here that so we have yet to name. Yeah, so please let us know if any of these items are of interest, um, and uh, you can definitely purchase them on our website. We're going to do free shipping, USPS domestic, for the next week. So. Thank you for, <laughs> you look like an evil, <laughs> an evil genius. Okay. Anyway. Just so soft. Be, I know. You can't stop it, right? I know. So thank you for watching and um, check, definitely check out these items and let us know what you think. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching and please be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. And uh, we're also posting on Instagram TV. 
Uh, follow us on social media on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And to show our appreciation, uh, we would like to read some of your comments from this past week. And uh, my sister, since she is our social media maven at the moment, is going to do the honors this week. What a title. <laughs> uh, so if you saw our episode last week. Uh, or maybe two weeks ago two by weeks the time ago. This, yeah. this airs. Two weeks A ago. previous episode of Undated Time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was the christmas ween Christmas-ween? Christmas-ween. Tree. Uh, mix of Christmas and Halloween. So uh, we put a, some of the products from the store as uh, Christmas tree ornaments. So when I came to the store, I set up some of the seashells that we have uh, as ornaments, and some of you really liked it. Uh, Lady Bad Crumbles says, what a lovely idea. And Velvet, Velvet Underground Dishness, uh, <laughs> what a handle, uh, says, I buy ornaments from beach towns when I'm on vacation, so my tree is all seashells and ocean themed. I think that's really pretty. That's why I wanted to put all the seashells kind of together and try off try out different um, sizes to get this sort of more like a more distinct look so yeah and they're really easy to make um, especially with seashells because they're nice and light so mm -hmm. um, if you're feeling crafty definitely check it out so anyway thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time bye, bye. it was further forward are we cheering mm -hmm. oh, we're sipping. <laughs>